Welcome to this edition of Able to On Air, the holiday edition of Able to On Air, the one and only program that focuses on our needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm your host, Lauren Siler. Aline Siler. And welcome to this holiday edition. This is our year in review. First up, let's take a look at a clip that uh, we did with Monica Hutt. She is part of Dale, the Vermont Division for Disabilities, Aging, and Independent Living this year. Let's take a look at this clip. What are the missions and goals of, of your organization? So the Department for Disabilities, Aging, and Independent Living is a department in state government. Uh, we are one of the departments under the Agency of Human Services. And Dale's mission is, is pretty big and pretty broad. Um, it's to make Vermont the best state in which to grow old or live with a disability with dignity, respect, and independence. All this year in 2018, um, Washington County Mental Health came by for several episodes. Let's take a look at Mary Moulton, the Executive Director of Washington County Mental Health. She was on to discuss how Washington County Mental Health helps people with special needs. Let's take a look at this clip. Lawrence to, to serve, so to serve those in our community who are in need of mental health services, who are in need of services if they have a developmental disability, mm -hmm. um, if they have a substance use disorder, mm -hmm. um, anyone who is having a difficulty in their life that um, feels as if they need some help for it. And that's our main message. Um, there's a lot of trauma that people experience in their lives. And for example, what do you exactly do you mean since this is mental yeah. health month and we're going to deal with a lot of different things what it, what is trauma and the mental health definition of it so trauma is unique to the individual so i would never tell you if you told me of something that was very sad or um, say you suffered some abuse in your life i would i i and you and it was traumatic to you um, that is how you define it, and I would never tell you that wasn't traumatic. It's something that affects you so that it alters how sometimes you view life, um, and it, um, it's, it's something you might need to seek support for over time, mm -hmm. and it helps to form your thought process as you go forward. Um, so, uh, you know, a significantly hard thing that happens in life that causes us to have some physical or mental reaction um, that we have to work through, that can be, the base of that can sometimes be a traumatic event, like say abuse as a child, for example. Or uh, post-traumatic stress disorder Absolutely. from um, for our World vets, Trade Center or you war betcha. or something along Absolutely. those lines. Several times this year, um, we've spoken about smoking and the importance of not smoking in buildings and how buildings have become smoke-free. Let's take a look at a clip with uh, Washington County Mental Health on smoking. Let's take a look at this. Central Vermont New Directions Coalition is a substance abuse prevention coalition. Mm -hmm. So our mission is really to encourage healthy behavior and decrease substance abuse, especially in Washington County. Okay. When you say decrease substance abuse, mm -hmm. what exactly does that mean? Well, the key word is prevention. We really want to stop something before it starts. So we want to decrease uh, the number of kids who are starting to try cigarettes. We want to decrease the number of smokers uh, and where it's causing harm to their health. We want to lower the number of people abusing prescription drugs, and we want to limit underage drinking of alcohol. Washington County Mental Health has, uh, has a newspaper called Shockwave, where they involve consumers of Washington County Mental Health Services in writing, painting, and so many other things. Let's take a look at this clip from the Shockwave episode. Let's take a look at this. What, what, what types of things do you guys do within Shockwave? Is it, is it like 
new stories? Is it um, so? What the foundation is visual arts, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. painting, drawing, collage. Um, one thing that's featured in Shockwave that's kind of a little different is we don't just have single artist work. We have collaborative work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when somebody comes in, maybe they are not feeling confident in doing their own work, but they might feel confident collaborating with one or two other people and coming up with a piece of art. We have uh, one person who uh, had never done art before but likes to write. Mm -hmm. And that written word became that person's art mm -hmm. and has become featured in Shockwave as part mm -hmm. of collaboration with other artists, uh, visual artists. And then we discover we have a talent for poetry in mm -hmm. groups of folks, different groups of folks that come. Uh, and some don't necessarily attend, but they brought their poetry to us mm -hmm. when we asked for it. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing mm. to see how many people not only um, let us put their poetry in the magazine, but came to write poetry. Um, and again, collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Some of the, I don't think mm -hmm. there's anything in Shockwave that was written in collaboration yet. Several times this year, Abel Den Arnair was at the State House with the Poor People's Campaign. Let's take a look at several clips from the Poor People's Campaign. Let's take a look at this. National call for a moral revival here in Vermont and across this nation. Today we are doing something that's never been done before. We are gathering here in Montpelier. We are gathering in Sacramento, California, Little Rock, Arkansas, Montgomery, Alabama, Jackson, Mississippi. We are gathered with our sisters and brothers in 37 states and in the colony of the District Republic, uh, District of Columbia, also known as uh, Washington, D.C. We're gathering together as a moral witness to say poverty is immoral. Back in February, Abel Den on Air was at the State House for Disability Awareness Day. Let's take a look at a clip from Disability Rights Vermont from the press conference from Disability Awareness Day. Let's take a look at this. And our well being. Um, with all that's going on in the world and the state lately, this is a timely theme. And I think that you folks know and experience what those things outside of what is strictly medical have an effect on our health and well-being. Our housing, our ability to get work, our ability to get support just to get out in the community. Um, and those are all very much, those are all issues that are very much in play this year when we look at what's on the uh, agenda in the legislature. Um, either that's been put there by legislators or very much, maybe even more pertinently, what's been put there in the uh, administration's uh, budget proposal. Three Mountain Support Services recently came on Abled and On Air. Executive Director Joshua Smith talks about his organization. Let's take a look at this. Since we're talking about deinstitutionalization, what, in your opinion, what is the definition so our viewers can know what deinstitutionalization really means? So basically, is that what what that what that entails is that you, you, you based off of somebody's disability, you are segregated. Mm -hmm. So you're segregated from the rest <laughs> of society. Mm -hmm. And what that and and Brandon Training School was was the was closed in 1993. So we've about 25 years since we actually, um, so it's only been 25 years mm -hmm. that we've, we've, we got, we deinstitutionalized. So what that means is that it doesn't matter if you have red hair, you wear hearing aids, you wear glasses, or you have an intellectual disability, you deserve to be a part of your own community. That it's, we are only stronger as, as, you know, as Vermont when everybody 
has the same accessibility to everything else, your local hardware store, your local coffee shop, your, your, your grocery store, and your, you know, your local churches and, and, and synagogues and whatnot. So everybody is able to um, access and be a part of that community. Mm -hmm. So we're, Vermont was the first state to do that. We said, you know what, it doesn't matter that you have a disability, you deserve to know your neighbors, you deserve to be treated like everybody else. Uh, Us at Ableton On Air, we would like to say uh, that um, you know, um, this year during Hanukkah and during the uh, holidays, we should all band together and not have prejudice at our dinner tables. Uh, why don't we bow, bow our heads uh, for a couple of minutes to remember the victims of uh, the worst According to news reports, it's the worst um, uh, event in America in American history with the Pittsburgh synagogue. Um, so why don't we bow our heads in a couple of minutes of silence for them? Again, uh, this year we should not have any prejudice at the dinner table with Hanukkah and uh, Christmas and the holidays. Um, now back to our clips. Um, Good Samaritan this year had their annual event uh, back in September. Let's take a look at a clip of that event. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much for coming out tonight to support the shelter and the work that uh, we're doing to end homelessness. Um, this uh, level of community support really means the world to our organization. It's what enables us to do the work that we do, uh, from the volunteers and churches who provide meals, uh, especially Bethany and Heading congregations who donate their space for our warming shelters each winter. I had to go into the Good Samaritan shelter, on the shelter. And uh, for me, that was a, not a hard choice, easy choice, because for me to go into the homeless shelter and then come out with a part for me and my son was an easy choice for me. So I put my son first. And uh, going into the shelter was um, provided a nice, clean environment, uh, get to do laundry, uh, shower, you know, for, uh, support my work. At the time, I was working three to eleven at night, so I, you know, the curfew I couldn't make, so they allowed me to come here late at night and, uh, you know, take a shower, do something I need to do, and get up in the morning time. And uh, you know, going to the shelter was um, there was some, uh, it was, it was, it was good. You know, it's something that you got to do. You know, you put your son first and you put those things first, so you go and do it. And um, it's something that was great for me. Um, and I got an apartment at Down Street, Down Street Housing. So my, I stayed Down Street at um, Rear Station Apartments. My son, who Makai now, he goes to first grade at New Elementary School. Uh, I work at Southern Duke Jesus, so everything is great, life is great. So This year, we also had a gentleman that spoke about the third annual cerebral palsy conference at Green Mountain, Sup Green Mountain Support Services. Jim Cavanaugh. Let's take a look at this clip. Mountain Support Services. We have Casey Dewey, the development coordinator of Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont. Yeah. And um, James, or Jim, uh, tell us a little bit about you and um, your story and mm. why uh, you decided to create the Cerebral Palsy Conference of Vermont. Well, I was born February 20, 1943. Wow. Okay. And I'm 75. Wow, you don't look okay. it. Okay. And obviously, um, well, Besides myself having cerebral palsy, obviously back in the 40s or during that time, um, it, you know, there weren't very many services for people with disabilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my mother and father wanted to put me on, 
away. But they said no. Mm -hmm. They said no. And thank God they said, but I cannot read. So I have taught books. Okay, go yeah. on. So, and, uh, so I came up here. Mm -hmm. You came to Vermont from where? Yeah. Were you born in Vermont? I was or? born in Connecticut. You were born in Connecticut? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. At first, I could not talk. Mm -hmm. But my, my grandfather says, let the kid, <laughs> let the kid talk. Right. <laughs> talk, 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 talk. And they were, and they were quite surprised because he said, let the kid talk. Mm -hmm. And I've been talking ever since. Mm -hmm. Several times this year, Ron Rondon from Brick Arts Media, who's been a supporter of Able Dinner on Air, came on to the show as a phone call. Let's take a look and listen to this clip. Uh, we are broadcasted on there as well. Uh, we would like to welcome Ron Rondon, our uh, sports anchor for this uh, for this show, and uh, welcome, Ron. Hello there. And uh, what is the show that you do? Of course, road trip with Ron Rondon. It's kicking off season number five, coming up on October fifth on Brooklyn Free Speech Network. Wow. Okay, now Brooklyn Free Brooklyn Brooklyn Free Speech Network. Um, is what? What kind of uh, station is it again? So for well, people we're representing all of most of Brooklyn, all of Brooklyn, of course, representing from our friends at Optimum and Spectrum, and also RCN, and also on Verizon Files. So in any of these areas, check it out. And of course, we're also online on at BrickArtsMedia.org. Also on our social media platforms, you can check it out on our. Facebook page, Road Trip with Ron Rondon, and of course on Road Trip TV One on YouTube. So a lot of pop and some other social medias here is we'll put it on the air, we'll post it. If you're watching Road Trip right now, we'll post all this on the air and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. Back in September, it was the anniversary of 9-11. Washington County Mental Health also participated in this conversation. Let's take a look at this clip from the 9-11 special. Let's take a look at this. 9-11 um, was a horrible uh, uh, situation for anybody. Um, what exactly is trauma and how does your office deal with it? So trauma um, or a traumatic event or events is any event that does two things. It mm -hmm. overwhelms our our capacity to cope, it overwhelms our usual ways of functioning, mm -hmm. and it results in a, uh, an experience of threat to our innermost safety. And so... Experience of threat, how so? So when we're experiencing a traumatic event, we often think that, we often believe, we don't think, we believe, we experience that our lives are in danger, or that the life of a loved one is in danger. Um, and Traumatic experiences almost always are unexpected, and they take away our sense of control and sort of the order of our universes. And 9-11 and is a great example of that. I'm well, sure a horrible example, a not hor great. Fine. <laughs> it's, a, it's a perfect example. How about that? Yeah. There were people there who were going about their business. They were working. They were doing all the things that people were doing in the towers, and all of a sudden their entire world's changed. Mm -hmm. The Vermont Workers Center was on Able Den On Air. Leanna Gayette and another guest was there as well. Let's take a look at this clip from the Vermont Workers Center. We are trying <coughs> to get the word out um, for everybody to be able to get universal health care. Mm -hmm. um, and what exactly is universal health care? It is um, health care for everybody. Nobody is excluded. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter if you're in poverty or you're um, you got know, a lot of money. Um, it's for everybody. 
during an event back in February at the State House Disability Awareness Day, I taped several workshops with a camera. Let's listen in to one of the workshops, The Human Cost of Cuts. And this year, there's been many service cuts to the special needs community. Let's take a look on how you can help um, that that you can help America not be cut by disability services. Let's take a look and listen to this clip. And even if they don't cut health care, by cutting the something like housing or food or something else, they might impact health care. So I wanted to just kind of talk about a couple of the budget cuts and get some feedback from all of you guys about how those budget cuts will impact actual people. People like you, people like your friends, people like your family, people who vote and vote for these elected representatives. So I think if we can start telling the story of if you cut personal care attendance services and someone can't get to work, this is how it's going to impact their day and their life and their children and their family. Gary Gordon, the Director of Emergency Services for Washington County Mental Health, was on Able Done On Air talking about suicide prevention. Let's take a look at this clip. Uh, what are the missions and goals of your department and what is a screener? Okay. Missions and goals, uh, well generally our mission obviously dovetails with the mission of Washington County Mental Health Services in general, um, which we serve the needs of our population in our catchment area. We cover all of Washington County and three towns in Orange County, Washington, Orange, and Williamstown, mm -hmm. all are considered part of our catchment area. And we serve the mental health needs of the people in that area. Uh, generally, our philosophy is based on the recovery model. You know, we believe Which that is what? What is the uh, Just kind model? of in brief, um, based on the idea that an individual's um, recovery from an illness mm -hmm. is, they're in charge of it. Okay. You know, everybody's individual, um, their needs are different. Mm -hmm. um, we try to work with them to develop um, programs or within the programs and things that we offer models of uh, of treatment that works for them, you know, we're collaborative with them in their efforts to to um, to to manage and recover from their illnesses. So in general, that's I mean that's maybe a a, not a snapshot of it. Um, there's more information about that on our, our website at wcmhs.org. Mm -hmm. Zach Hughes and Kirk Postawake of Washington County Mental Health Public Relations Department was on Ableton on Air. On uh, back in May, let's take a look at this clip, and also the interview included a clip from Geraldo Rivera. Let's take a look at this clip. I have Zach Hughes, peer support specialist for Washington County. Thank you. Thank for, you for joining us on Ableton on Air. Thank you. What are the missions and goals of Washington County Mental Health? Well, uh, I have to say the mission is to uh, to support the individuals in our community to enable them to live independent, productive lives in our community to the best of their ability. Okay. Now, when we say independent uh, to the best of your ability, what exactly does that mean in layman's terms? Well, I mean, we all want to be able to uh, go home at night and, and live our lives, right? Uh, go downtown, shop. Uh, and do all kinds of things in our lives, right? Washington County Mental Health also came on to talk about the Learning Network and all the activities of the Learning Network. Let's listen to that clip. Learning Network is a program within the developmental services area mm -hmm. of Washington County and it is a extensive program that occurs during the daytime um, for 
are individuals who live with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And the mission is to provide a wide variety, a very versed uh, variety of activities, programs, classes, events, um, opportunities to go on trips mm -hmm. for community integration that will offer, that offer everyone the opportunity to network and develop friendships, to um, gain a better understanding of who they are in the world and their gifts and their potential, mm -hmm. um, developing skills in, that will help folks become more independent, mm -hmm. um, to have fun. You know, part of the mission is to have fun and to, to learn about yourself. Recently, the Transportation Committee for the Paratransit Committee of Vermont was on Ableton On Air. I'm part of the Transportation Committee. Let's take a look and listen to this clip about transportation and people with special needs. Vermont is getting in the future more paratransit for people with special needs. Let's listen in to Dan Courier and the committee. Let's take a look at this. Dan, what is the missions and goals of the uh, Central Vermont Planning Regional uh, Planning Commission and the um, the, trans the paratransit committee? Sure. So the Central Area Planning Commission is a regional planning commission. Uh, we have 23 towns in our region that, that we help do uh, municipal planning for, uh, regional planning, and that can be natural resources that can help them with energy planning, that can be a transportation study. Um, and specifically with transportation, um, we are focused on a, the implementation of a new paratransit system that the Green Mountain Transit has mm -hmm. proposed for our region. And so uh, through a grant uh, with the um, um, uh, CTAA, which is the Community Transportation Association of America, um, we have uh, brought together um, stakeholders as well as users of the existing uh, transportation system. Well, we would like to um, say happy holidays to all of us from Able and On Air. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, and again, let's not have any prejudice at the dinner table this holiday. Let us all remember the uh, Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. Um, again, um, let's bow our heads for, uh, uh, for that, and um, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, and Merry Christmas from all of us at Able Den On Air. See you in 2019 and many happy tidings. See you next year. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next year.